All right, so uh, welcome. I think you can all come a little bit uh, closer, uh, then I don't need to shout so much. Um, so I'm a professor in atomic and molecular physics, and uh, the topic I picked today, so my lecture will be about uh, actually the second. So the second is uh, the unit of time, and then you can wonder perhaps how long does a second actually last? For a long time we have defined time based on the motion of, uh, of the Earth and the Sun. And so at the moment uh, the, the second is defined using an atomic clock. Using an atom, um, 133 cesium. So the, the assumption is <coughs> that the cesium atom, as any other atom, is actually not changing in time. So we, we needed to get away already in the 60s or the 70s from the rotation of the Earth as, as a unit. Uh, and we went to the, to the definition based on an oscillation in an atom, because the atoms are always the same. Perhaps one remark on, on why it's important to have a very accurate definition of the second. It is also the thing that makes, for example, GPS navigation possible. The atom is a quantum object, so actually we, uh, it means you have quantized energy levels in an, uh, in an atom. And these, uh, the only difference between these quantum energy levels is the quantum numbers. What I've done, I've written here the kind of code for the electronic structure of the cesium atom. So that's the lowest ground, that's the ground state of the atom. A 6s electron just over there. Okay, so these are the lowest energy levels of, uh, of cesium. Actually, there's also a hyperfine structure here. Uh, the 2p1 half splits in two levels because of the hyperfine interaction which has the f is 4 and 3 again, and the 3 half level combines with the 7 half spin to form a total uh, uh, f quantum number of 5, 4, 3 or 2. So there are four sub-levels here. Um, these are energy levels in the atom, which means you need some kind of way to, if you want to measure a certain transition, you need to supply energy. And that can be done in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And actually these, the ground state to these electronic states you can excite by using uh, light. Light is electromagnetic radiation. If you shine 894 nanometer light on a cesium atom it will absorb that light and it will make a transition from the ground state to that 2p1 half state. If you shine 852 nanometer light on a cesium atom, it will also absorb that and will make a transition from the 2s1 half to the 2p3 half level. So the difference in energy between photons with a wavelength of 894 or 852 nanometer, that's actually uh, the fine structure splitting. Now the hyperfine, uh, you can also make transitions between the hyperfine levels, but that's a much smaller energy. It's about a factor of 2000 smaller uh, than the fine structure, and that's because the mass of the electron is about one two thousandths of that of the proton. So you see that the mass ratio between the electrons and the protons determines actually the ratio between this splitting and this splitting. Yeah, so I think this brings me to the end of, of, the, of the mini lecture that, uh, in which I wanted to give you some insight in the, in the beautiful structure of, of atoms. Um, you see it's a combination of, in principle, small simple steps to describe the still pretty complicated system that the cesium atom is. But you now also know that in this, this small energy splitting, um, that actually is used and essential to understand that if you want to, well, for example, build a GPS receiver. To use it, you don't need to know it, but it might add something now that you see what's behind it. So that's it, thank, thank you. you.